Well, you can't say that. That's where it goes sometimes. There we go. Hey, man. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you good. All right, perfect, perfect, perfect. How you doing? Doing good, man. Good. good thank you. you. <laughs> I like the, the background. Yeah. Hey, man, we're trying to look, uh, yeah, we're trying to look legit. You mine is uh, mine is uh, not set up, so we're just. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you you have that. I just moved in. Look. We do. I know. <laughs> like, what do you want to see here exactly? <laughs> so you know, on Zoom, you can put up your own background too. Yeah, I've heard, I, I've, I've seen people do it. I don't know how to do it. Oh, okay, so if you uh, take your mouse, scroll it over the um, the screen, you go down to yeah. the image of the camera. Okay. You will click the up arrow. It'll, okay. it'll say, choose virtual background. Okay, let's see. Click that, and it should give you some things that you, like a, a, a bridge outside. Mine says none. Choose a virtual background. I got none there. Let's see. <laughs> oh, well, you might have the basic membership. <laughs> <laughs> That's, well, hmm. Let's see if I can add an image. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, your house doesn't look like a crack house or anything. So, no, yeah. no I, just, like, I, I don't really have a, I don't really have anything better. Yeah. 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 We're talking to Andrew from his closet. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Hey. How's that? I'm not okay. in Colorado. Sure. <laughs> sure, you're up in the Appalachian. Yeah, there hey. we go. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, uh, so really, uh, what we're really just doing um, is it's really just a motivational speech. Yeah. Um, just two minutes. Um, you know, with the with the show, you know, I kind of told you a little bit about it. Uh, it's yeah. a web series. Um, there's also attached a, um, a podcast and then a website as yeah. well. And so the website, we're building that to, uh, if you have a service that you need or a nonprofit, a cause that you want to learn more about or support, yeah. coverageoccupation.com, put in your credentials, use our directory, and we'll get them coming to you. So we want to cut down the amount of time it takes from I know I need something to getting it. 
Yeah. So that's that's it in a nutshell. So what we're doing in the show, it's a weekly show, 30 minutes. This is really the end of it, end of the show. And what we're doing is every show we have a topic and we talk about it. So we'll talk about it um, from a definition standpoint. Then we take the same topic. Then we have a uh, real world application. So mm-hmm. transition, um, when I'm transitioning from playing to uh, my life after sports, Right. As we talk about our diet and fitness, you have to adjust how you eat. You can't mm-hmm. eat like you eat. So here we talk about transit, but here's tangible steps, right? That right. You can do. The third uh, act of the show is talking with a psychologist saying, yeah. okay, um, so transition is our first episode. Right. We say, what exactly is happening in our heads when we're transitioning? Yeah. yeah. What does it look like? Positive ways, negative ways, coping mechanisms. So if you're an athlete, what do you look for? If you're a family member, what do you look for? If you're a spouse or a son or a daughter, your your mom or dad may be having problems and they don't even know. Yeah. So, yeah. so you have, then at the end of it, it says, hey, thanks so much for joining us this week. Uh, now, this is your weekly motivation. Okay. And so we say, hey, my name is you know, Andrew Carr. I uh, played football at Vanderbilt University. Yeah. Just be, yeah. Just be you. Uh, one yeah. quick thing in your in your room, half your face is dark. Let's see. Oh, let me see if I can light it. Yeah. Maybe you can open a blind. Yeah. Ainsley Battles, Occupation, Andrew Carr, Motivational Speech. So thanks so much for watching this week of Jockupation. We're going to end this week with a motivational speech. Uh, we have one of my great friends, Andrew Carr. Andrew, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ainsley. Super excited about the show and what you guys are doing and hope that I can provide a little bit of inspiration for your audience this week. But um, yeah, you and I go, go way back, but my background, uh, at least in athletics, was um, I was a four-year walk-on in the SEC at Vanderbilt University. Uh, You know, really enjoyed playing. I was an academic SEC, two-time academic All-SEC player my senior uh, senior and junior year. And just, um, you know, it was one of those things where it was a dream come true for me to get to play at the college level. I had grown up a big Notre Dame fan and always wanted to play college football. That, to me, was the pinnacle. And getting to play in the SEC was like, you know, nothing I could ever dream of. And so, um, you know, this topic of transition and what you guys are talking about, I think is really important for athletes because despite the dream that it fulfills for us, inevitably at some point it always comes to an end, which I think is always shocking to us to some degree. So as a walk-on, football's tough enough, right? (laughs) It's tough enough when you're on a full ride. But to be a walk-on, what is it about the strife? What is it about the... What is it about the sport that would draw you to it to willingly say, this is what I want to do? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's like being in the volunteer army, you know. Uh, you, get, you get to be a part of this team. You get to be a part of this thing that's bigger than yourself. And to be able to play with so many talented guys like yourselves that went on and played in the NFL and had great success, just to be a part of that team and be on the field, playing in the biggest stadiums in the country against the very best teams. You know, we played – against the national champions almost every year that we were there, right? Or teams that were number one or top 10 in the country. And for me to be a part of that and just to get out on the field and have a chance to compete, just to have that opportunity to get out there and really make something happen and maybe have that very special moment that you could work five, 10 years for was really just all I, all the motivation I needed. And, you know, really, I just love playing the game. Uh, people ask me today, you know, oh, you used to play football. And I said, I'm still a football player. If you gave me a helmet and pads and let me get out there, I'd still go out and give it my best <laughs> effort. You know, I love it that much that I wake up every fall having dreams about that fresh cut grass. And, and you know, my dreams as I get older are a little bit different. You know, it's like, just get me in for one more play, you know, mm-hmm. one more play. But I would still have that same attitude where I to have the opportunity today. Yeah, I, I think the same thing. I could do a third and long. A third and 12, <laughs> I could do a quarter, right? I, I could cover the flats, coach. That's right. <laughs> But what is it? Because there's something that happens when we start to, um, when, the, when the level of competition starts to increase, right? I think back when I was a high school teacher, kids always want the answer. I don't, I'm not going to give you the answer. You've got to learn the process. 
So yeah. as we go higher in competition, can you remember that time where it switches from the external opponent versus the internal opponent? Because yeah. I know the higher you get to, to push yourself when those times are tough, playing sports or maybe you're getting a master's. Maybe you're just trying, trying to figure things out. There's something to be said about the shit. There's something to be said about that grind, yeah. That, yeah. That, that, that pressure that makes us who we are. And I think the higher in sports we get, that's what we actually look for is that opportunity. Yeah, so yeah. what is it about sports and playing and, and the, the competition do you now apply in your life as either a businessman, as a husband, as a father, uh, all of it? Yeah, well, I think you know, what you're getting at, and I think the question that I really learned was, you know, how good can I be? You know, what does it really look like to compete at the highest levels, right? And so when you're playing in the SEC and when you're playing against guys that are going to be drafted uh, in the first round of the NFL draft week in and week out, you get a chance to test yourself at the very, very highest level. And, and just to know that, you know, for me as a walk-on, I came in with very low expectations. Nobody expected me to do anything. And for me to be able to get out on the field and compete against guys like that, that obviously had a little more physical gifts than I had, perhaps, <laughs> Uh, what was allowing, you know, it allowed me to test myself and to really test my mettle. And what I can say, what I brought out of that experience was, you know what, I know that I've, I've maximized every ounce of athletic ability and, and study and whatever I had. And then if I could do that here in an area where I was sort of an underdog, that I can take that level of competition and that, that ability to grind through problems, that ability to keep at it and persist, you know, that grit, those are things that I can take anywhere, right? And then and, and I still see you know, guys that were able to, guys that were really good, and you, you know, you saw this, guys that were really good on our college team barely made it in the NFL, you know, barely made it onto an NFL roster. And so the, the level of competitiveness that you see there, uh, when, you, when you get to see it that up close and know that you can sort of test yourself against those folks and still be a part of the team and still contribute and still make positive things happen, that was the really the highlight for me and something that I've taken with me everywhere because I know that I can compete against the very best now. It doesn't matter if it's in sports, athletics, academics, you know, or, or in the business world. And you go, look, as long as I do my thing and maximize the gifts that I've got, I'm going to have some success at some point or another. <laughs> and, and to me, it's, it's that, that's how simple and straightforward it is. I think when we get done, we think there's some – Rubik's Cube, like there's some Rosetta Stone, like the um, um, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, right? There's, there's like some thing you've got to, and you start to realize you've been doing it the whole time. Yeah. The yeah. fact that you can get up when you're sore <laughs> and you're sore in places you didn't even know you had, but you still compete, you still train, you still, yeah. through the blood, sweat, and the tears, you're putting yourself aside or you're really investing yourself in yeah. something greater than yourself. And it's, I think it's that that athletes try to find or try to re try to recreate. Yeah. But you know, there's there's nothing that, there's nothing like walking from the field house, you know what I mean, in, into the stadium. There's right. nothing like the smell, like you said, the smell of the, the grass. Like I live in the desert. I live in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> but every once in a while, when I get a whiff of cut grass in autumn. Mm -hmm. It's like Pavlov's dog, right? It's okay. just, yeah, I'm ready, to, I'm ready to play. It's just, that's part of us. But it's, it's kind of, what advice could you give to, 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 to people who they need to move into the next season of their life? How can they, how can they reconcile with their past? Because a lot of times, very few of us are ever going to end our careers the way we want it to, right? Exactly. Very few of us you know, our last year winning the Super Bowl MVP, you know, it, that doesn't happen. No. Most of us, it's either you get hurt, you retire, or you get fired. And you're just kind of, you know, taken yeah. out to pasture, right? Yeah. What could you, what, what advice could you get? Or what, I don't say advice. What perspective did you gain? Well, I, I'll tell you, you know, and I'll apply something that I've learned since, you know, since my time then is that, you know, I teach a class now and I teach, I've been having, lucky enough, I, I wrote a book a couple years ago and I've been able to travel the country and speak and teach to a lot of corporate groups. And one of the topics that I speak on the most is, is change management and transition. And one of the things that I tell people is that, you know, there's a, a fundamental difference between change and transition. 
you know, change is actually, we talk about change a lot and how people are adverse to change, but change is actually the easy part because change is, is externally visible. You can almost put it on a calendar and it's really a moment in time that we have to come to terms with. But what's difficult is, is transition because transition is actually a psychological process that I have to go through to come to terms with a new thing. So like you said, you know, the change event happens to us all when we're playing athletics at one point or another. You just talked about it. You get fired, you get hurt, you get cut. And, and so we have to come to terms with that. And a lot of it, honestly, and we don't want to talk about it because we're big, strong athletes, right? But a lot of it is like a grieving process <laughs> because you've been at, you've been competing at the highest levels. You've fulfilled a dream. You have made it, if you will, right? And now you have to step back and go, all of that instantaneously is gone. And a lot of times we're not prepared for that transition psychologically that we have to go through. And uh, it's one of those things where, you know, my story uh, is like a lot of athletes, you know, senior year, we had a great team that year. We wanted to go to a bowl game and be, you know, sit, make history as Vanderbilt. And midway through the season, I get my knee cut out uh, at South Carolina going down on a kickoff and I blow out my knee and I'm devastated. You know, I, I think, man, I've worked, you know, not just for four years, but for eight or 10 or 12 years of playing football. And, and this can't be how it ends, right? This can't be the end of the story, man. We're, we're right in the thick of contending here. And so I, I honestly, I, I moped around for about two weeks. And then I started, my knee started feeling a little bit better. And I said, you know what? I'm playing on special teams. I might be uh, the, the most uh, physically ungifted person on this team, but I want, to, I want a chance to make a good ending. And, and really that's one of the things that I've learned too, is that you know, to make a new beginning, you have to make a good ending. And if you can't make a good ending and you can't come to terms with that thing, that you're gonna have a difficult time transitioning. So in my own small way, I was able to get out there. I played my last two games against Florida, Kentucky, Tennessee, on a torn ACL, I made two more tackles, you know, two more tackles. That may not mean anything to anybody, but for me to get back out on the field and end my career in a positive way where I was in the battle, what was a big thing for me, because it doesn't come on the terms, you know, that, that we want it to ever, but it allowed me to make a good ending, which allowed me to, to then go, okay, what's next? You know, what, what can I look forward to now? If I get my head looking ahead, what can I look forward to and really uh, concentrate on making a positive transition? I mean, and again, it's, it's not gonna be an easy time. Anybody that tells you that you're gonna go from success here to just more success here and some other criteria is lying to you. That's where you gotta come back and you gotta have people that support you and you gotta have people that go, you know what, all those things we talked about before that you learned, you'll be able to take to that next playing field, but it's gonna take a little while and it's gonna be probably a little bit rocky before it gets better. But you will get through it though. Absolutely. At the end of the day, the sun's gonna come up in the east <laughs> And it's going to be a new day. Yes. And I think, you know, with, um, yeah, because we're in our 40s now. So yeah. when I think of this, like the circle of life, we, it's kind of gone through the, the, you know, infant, childhood, adolescence, prepubescent, early adult, to the point where I think we've now individually have, we have our own habits. We have our own ways of doing things. Yeah. And now having children and families we now start to see much bigger, not what I'm doing, but it's more of the why am I doing it? And so when a guy is going, or when a girl, or when an athlete is going through that transition, what's a question they could ask themselves to either figure out what they want to do or what they don't want to do? Yeah, I, mean, I think you know, there, there's a lot of different ways to approach it. I think one thing is, you know, again, giving yourself time, go through that process. And you have to, uh, what I call, there's a stage of this called investigating options. You have to give your time, you have to give yourself some time to investigate new options, to really try some things, to try and fail and to be willing. And what's hard is that you've gone from a place where you've only, you know, not only succeeded, but you've reached the pinnacle, right? And yet when it comes to athletics, it's always cut off at a young age, unless you get to be Tom Brady or somebody who plays into their forties. Again, the, the rare exception, you're going to be cut off and you're going to feel like you're too young for it, right? I still want to do this more. But, but what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go, okay, um, what, can I, what can I give myself some opportunity to try and fail, to, to get out and try some things that I may not be good at, that's going to be awkward, going to be a little bit uncomfortable, and, and give myself the space to get out there and try something without the fear that I have to look like I'm the very best at it, just like I just was in my athletic career. Because when you try something new, 
you're inevitably not going to be as good at it. That's just the way it is, guys. That's the learning curve, right? And mm -hmm. so give yourself some space to, to try some new things, maybe even, and, and you'll figure out, um, you'll figure out where you have some talent that maybe can be developed and you'll probably figure out some things you shouldn't be doing. And sometimes that's even more valuable to figure out what you're not cut out for. And, and it's just part of the process that we all have to go through. And, and that's what I absolutely love. We always think of, because I think when I was a teacher, kids always want to say, well, I don't know what I want to do in life, right? I don't know if I want to be a doctor or a lawyer. And I'll say, okay, that's fine. I said, well, let me ask you this. What don't you want to do in life? You know, well, I don't want to clean up behind elephants at the zoo, right? right. I don't want to be emptying garbage. I'm like, okay, so what we figured out is we're going to learn how to read and write, yep. right? You're going to get certain skills so you know what not to do. Yeah. And I think that's what I really like about what you're saying is we get into this perfectionist mindset. We get into the mindset of if I just keep doubling down and trying harder, I can will it to happen when we actually have to realize <laughs> it not working is a sign for you to stop. Right. It's not a sign for you to keep, okay, I'll, I'll bet three times as much money this week because I'm going right. to get a winner. Maybe you're just yeah. shitty at betting and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. But how I, I be... you're saying, well, you're, you're talking about sunk cost to some degree, right? You know, and, and this would be an ability to double down. But I think one of the things that I speak on and that I wrote my book on is, is really the power of humility, you know? And so humility is one of these things that we sometimes think of and equate with weakness. But really what humility means to me is somebody who can always be in that mindset of being a perpetual learner somebody who's willing to take risk and put themselves out there knowing that they might fail, right? And they're brave enough to go ahead and take that risk because they know that at the end of the day, they may win, they may lose, but they're definitely going to learn something, right? And so if you can sit there and say, the point is not always to win, the point is to learn, right? Then you know that you're gaining knowledge, you're gaining new skill sets, you're learning about yourself maybe and, and what you're good and what you're not good at. But it, but it really becomes, I, I think, from athletes' perspective, we always want to go out and present this facade sometimes of supreme confidence. You know, you go out there and some days you never, you didn't feel great working out. Some days you didn't feel like your matchup was really good, but we got to present that we are supremely confident. And it's okay to say, it's okay to say, you know what? I don't know the answer here. I'm new in this field. Or you know what? Go, go to somebody who's been doing it better and say, hey, teach me, help me, help me learn what you learn. But you got to go at that with a humble attitude because people will see that you're being authentic and they'll want to jump in and help you out if you present it with that attitude rather than trying to present it from a, you know, maybe a place of arrogance or, or something where you're going to turn off a relationship because you're acting like you know the answer is when it's pretty obvious to everybody that you don't. So it's safe to say if you approach the business world the same way, the same way you did as a freshman going into the locker room, as a rookie going into the locker room, just saying, hey, look, you're a Hall of Famer, right? I need to learn cover two from you, right. which is the same as saying I just passed my Series 6 exam, but it still doesn't mean I can identify a stock or an option to invest in. I'm just allowed to mess up legally. That's so right. if they can transition just that mindset, uh, when you walk into a new team as an athlete, what do you normally do? We look for guys who will come in, be quiet, yeah. Open your ears, close your mouth, and learn. Figure out what's going on first before you have an opinion. That's right. Yeah, I mean, just look at, I, I think it's, it's apropos, right, and, and we miss him, but, you know, Kobe Bryant, look, look at his story. You know, here's a guy that, that had the world at his fingertips on the basketball court, and he had one of those storybook careers, right? He had that. He got to make that beautiful ending of what, that we wanted, that we talk about, that very few people get to. But he wasn't satisfied with that, and he had other interests, and he, he didn't ground his entire identity in being an athlete. He went out and said, hey, maybe I want to get into film. How can I get in? Who can I learn from there? And, and I think approach that with a perspective of, of humbleness and where can I go learn from some of the best in the business and, and leverage my work ethic and the things that I learned in athletics to craft out some success in a new area. And so I think he's a great example, you know, that we can look back on certainly this year and his legacy and go, here's a guy that, that really did it right, not only on the basketball court, which is what we're obviously going to primarily remember him for. But here's a guy two years later after retirement's winning an Oscar because he, he applied that same passion and focus to a new area. And he was humble enough to learn from people who had, who had been 20 years in, in that field, just like he was on the basketball court. And you bring up a great point, Ben, that's part of what we're aiming to do is create the 21st century athlete. 
like what does it really mean to be an athlete in the 21st century? Because when we were playing, we didn't have social media. We didn't have all these outlets and all these different direct to consumer. We always had an intermediary is either the school or the team or the marketing department. Now everybody can grow their own brands from high school because the yeah. way of ESPN 300, college, high school recruiting, college recruiting, the draft. So mm -hmm. people, it's almost, it's almost like you can be a reality star, right? If you kind of, you know, situate your, your together, but it's through that, how does, or a, what's, a, what's a, a question an athlete should be asking themselves to make sure they're still doing, they're still playing for the right reasons? Because, you know, as you get more, we can start equating ourselves to our, to our gains and what we're, we're, what our houses and our cars and yeah. coming to myself, right? Um, coming from Vandy and then playing with, um, you know, guys from oh, the Ohio State and Heisman Trophy winners. And, you know, you, there is that kind of internal, I feel like I should fit in, yep. per se. But then you start realizing your values start getting mm -hmm. skewed because you yeah, started yeah. playing for the love. That's why you're rewarded. But, you know, um, here's a big check too. <laughs> and then you say, well, wait a sec, so I can go buy stuff, right? What's a, what's a good question for athletes to, to really ask themselves, right? Why am I still doing it? Am I doing it for the ego, for the comfort, or because I'm still getting, I'm still, I'm still fulfilling myself? Well, I have to say, you know, I don't know what it was like to get that big check you're talking about. So maybe, maybe my perspective is a little bit different. But, but the, thing to me, the thing to me that I would say is, as an athlete and as a business person or in any other aspects of your life, you have to stay curious. You know, they, they talk about, there, there's a book out where uh, a guy named Adam Bryant, uh, you know, basically uh, did interviews of the top 100 CEOs at these Fortune 500 companies. And he said one of the things that marked almost every CEO that had been really successful was they were passionately curious. You know, they really wanted to get better at their craft, right? So they were always out asking questions. They weren't staying up in the boardroom and only talking to the board members. They were going down and getting in the trenches and, and learning their business from the ground up, going and talking to competitors, going and talking to people that were doing it right in their industry. And they were passionately curious about how do they get better, even though they might already be at the pinnacle of their business. How do you stay curious? Because if you find yourself in a position where you think you have all the answers, that is inevitably where you're going to start to trip up and stumble, right? And so, you know, bringing it back to sports, you know, you hear these strange stories, right, about Bill Belichick and how he would call up an assistant at a, a small Division II college in the middle of the summer and say, hey, tell me about how your guard, their, your left guard is positioning their feet on this one type of running play, right? And everybody mm -hmm. goes, that didn't happen, did it? And I, yeah, there are countless stories out there about here's a guy who's at the top of his game, supposedly a genius, right? Which, which we've always said don't really exist in football. But, you know, here's a genius who all of a sudden was, was always in that mode of, I want to pick up a new tip. I want to get better. I want to keep developing myself. So he was curious and always trying to look for a way to get better. And I think, again, that's something that we learn in athletics. But a lot of times we think uh, we don't need to transition that over to, to the business world or anything else, but, but staying curious and just asking questions and being able to go to people and say, hey, tell me what you know and put yourself in that position of a learner, I think is huge. Andrew, thank you so much for your time, for your input. Um, any closing advice, any closing words, um, anything, just the floor is yours. Yeah. Well, no, I, I thank you again for having me. I think this is a great format and a great platform for you guys. And I think I would just tell everybody, you know, who's been in those shoes that, uh, you know what, there's a bigger plan out there for you, right? Uh, playing sports is great and we all love it, but we know there's going to be a time to move on. And so take what you learned, harness it, go forward with that same level of enthusiasm. One of the things I always admire about you and your career was the enthusiasm you brought to the field. And so take those things like that and take them with you to the next phase. And, and ultimately you're going to succeed. But, but like I said before, you know, give yourself time during that transition. That's a normal, natural thing, but take that enthusiasm, take that passion, reapply it. And, and you can't lose. <laughs> Dude, that's great, man. That's gold. <laughs> thank you. Hey, man. Thank hey, you. I, I thank you. Hey, but also um, I do want to schedule some time with you in a couple of weeks to do a podcast. Sure. where we can sit down and really explore and yeah. really delve into these different um, components and stuff, man. But yeah, again, hey, dude, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's anchor down and let's just keep our fingers crossed. <laughs>
Let me know if you're going to get back for a game this year. I don't know if we're even going to have them, but you know. Yeah, yeah you saw our, um, our class reunions in February or something like this. I don't know. So, yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're, so, you know, I live in Vegas. So, we're. we're I know. We're, so, yeah, I don't. I have no idea, man. This COVID All right. thing. Just let me know if you, if you ever get back to Nashville. I'll get you one of these, right? Hey, you know what? There's a Amazon. So, I can always yeah. get that delivered. So, That's right. <laughs> yeah. No, but um, no, right. I definitely want to. Um, actually, you know what? Um, could you send me a link to that so I can get a copy of your book? Yeah. Because yeah, I would actually, I tell you what, I actually want to get your book and read it before we talk. That'd be great. So yeah, we can great. actually, because I read yeah. the um, uh, Givers and Takers book. Yeah. So great. that was really eye opening. I yeah. think a lot of that, um, I think we can do a lot. I mean, yeah, a lot of content there. Yeah, love it. man. So, hey, man, hey, give wife, kids, my best man, and thanks again. I enjoyed it, A.B. Good to talk to you, man. Good talking to you, too, my friend. All right. Be good. Be